Hello everyone and welcome again in the fifth lecture of Vibration with MATLAB. In the last lecture, we have started Numark beta method and we have seen free vibration response of a single degree of freedom system. In this lecture, we are extending the same method and now we are trying to understand the force vibration response using the same Numark method. This is my system where I am applying a harmonic force k is stiffness c is damping and m is mass this is a single degree of freedom system this is my equation of motion mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to my force that is f naught sine omega t where f naught indicating the amplitude of my harmonic force and omega here is the frequency of harmonic excitation in radians per second from the fundamental of force vibration response we know when we are applying external excitation on a system and if damping exists in the system the response is the combination of a transient phase and then the steady state response what happened actually when you give the excitation to your system the system start behaving by its own characteristic so that that part is actually denoted by this first graph where we are representing the vibration with the natural frequency and that vibration is dying out with respect to time because the damping is presented in your system the second plot is corresponding to your force vibration that is the vibration governed by the external excitation and finally we have a superposition of these two uh, vibration pattern and we receive a combined effect for initial period of time both the excitation exist in your system and therefore we are having a transient phase after a certain period of time when the initial uh, natural vibration die out we have only the steady state response when we want to apply the Numark method to get the response of such single degree of freedom system we have to solve three equation for every time instance the first equation here indicating the calculation of displacement with respect to a time step t plus one please understand i am considering that my initial time is t then the time moves with t plus 1 then t plus 2 so suppose t plus 1 is my current time step in this case the t will become the previous time step and what i am doing here i am calculating my displacement with respect to my current time step and to calculate this value i am using displacement velocity and acceleration corresponding to my previous time step that is t then I am having two constant alpha and beta which is defined in the Numark method. Del T is my time step. So this is my time increment which I will give as an input to my system. And finally I am having my force value and I am considering my force for my current time step. Once I will calculate the displacement, I will use this displacement to calculate my acceleration for T plus 1 time step. For calculating acceleration, I am using displacement, velocity and acceleration for the previous time step. In addition to that, I am also taking in account the displacement value for the current time step. Numark method involves both the previous time step and the current time step and therefore we call it as an implicit numerical approximation. After calculating the acceleration, we calculate the velocity and for velocity also we are using previous values as well as the current value. Alpha and beta are two constant. Alpha is known as Numark parameter which actually indicate the accuracy and stability of your solution. And the value of alpha varies from 0 to 1 by 4. Beta related to the numerical damping and it is a constant we take it value 1 by 2 if you will change the value of beta by 1 by 2 you will have unnecessary damping in your system if beta is less than 1 by 2 you will have numerical damping that will increase your amplitude similarly if the beta is more than 1 by 2 you will have a positive damping that will unnecessarily reduce the amplitude of your vibration 
these are the three equation we are going to implement in our MATLAB code first equation calculating displacement at time step t plus 1 m is your mass c is damping k is stiffness f t plus 1 indicating force value at current time step that is t plus 1 and we are also using values which are for the previous time step for example you can see here that your displacement is for time step t that is your previous time step similarly velocity and acceleration at this point you should understand that when you are solving a vibration problem call it as initial value problem for example we are having a system with spring and damper and a mass and we are saying that we are applying a harmonic force f sine omega t in addition to that we are having a choice to give some initial displacement for example x naught and x naught dot there may be a case where we are only applying harmonic force but we are having a choice to apply some initial displacement as well as velocity so when you are solving this first equation first time you are going to consider your initial displacement and initial velocity for time step t so when you are having a value corresponding to time step t your displacement will be your initial displacement your velocity will be your initial velocity and in addition to these two quantities you need initial acceleration to get the initial acceleration you can use your governing equation that is mx double dot plus kx plus cx dot is equal to your force term so you want to calculate this acceleration and how you can do that you can put this initial displacement and initial velocity here and solving this equation you will get initial acceleration this initial acceleration will also be corresponding to your t time step and to get the response corresponding to t plus 1 time step you have to implement these three quantities that is displacement corresponding to initial condition velocity as well as the acceleration once you will get the solution of your first equation you will calculate the acceleration and during calculating the acceleration you are using this displacement here in addition to that you are having displacement velocity and acceleration for the previous time step after calculating the acceleration you will calculate the velocity and in this equation you are going to use your acceleration for the current time step so in this way the numark method is going to apply both the quantities which are corresponding to your previous time step as well as the current time step and we call this method as implicit method however if you were going to consider beta is equal to zero your numark method will become an explicit method this is beyond the scope of this lecture but for your information you should know if your beta will become zero your numerical approach changed from an implicit method to an explicit method equal to a central finite difference method now let's see the matlab code this is your matlab program first two line are clc and clear all which we use to clear the command window as well as your memory for the given case we are taking a problem where my spring constant is 1000 and my damper is having a damping of value 0 0.3 mass is of value 1 all the values are in SI unit I am giving an excitation of 5 Newton with frequency 8 Hertz that means I am applying a force of value 5 sine 2 pi 8 T line 10 indicating that i am interested to see my response up to 50 seconds line 11 showing the time step which i am defining for my problem and here i am writing that it would be 0 0.125 divided by 25 now at this point i would like to explain that what should be the general criteria to select a time step when we talk about the implicit method we take a time step which able to visualize the maximum frequency available in our system what i want to convey in the given problem there are two types of frequency in your system one corresponding to your natural frequency because when you will have the transient response the system will possess both natural vibration as well as the forced vibration so your natural frequency in this case is close to 5 hertz 
and your excitation frequency is 8 hertz so as i said that particularly in implicit method our general criteria to select the time step is related to the maximum frequency in your system you have to first calculate the time period corresponding to your maximum frequency so i will get the time period by 1 by 8 and it is coming out 0 0.125 now our time step should be 20 to 25 times less than the time period of your system if you will have a larger time step your output will not be a pure sine wave there will be sharp edges when you are having peak in your sine wave we will see it when we will run our matlab code so here i am taking a time step of value 0 0.125 by 25 or i can also take a value which will be 0 0.125 divided by 20 line 12 is just making a time vector which is starting from 0 seconds and it will be up to 50 seconds with an increment of value equal to dt line 13 indicating the force vector which is f sine 2 pi f that is excitation frequency and the t value line 15 and 16 are additional line for your information actually these two lines are not really required to solve the new mark method but for inf your information i am indicating a new command that is eig command eig command is a standard function available in the matlab library and this actually solve the eigenvalue problem and when we solve the eigenvalue problem the eigenvalue problem give two output eigenvalues and eigenvector your eigenvalue give you the natural frequency of your system square of natural frequency as eigenvector show you the mode shape since this is a single degree of freedom system i am really not interested in eigenvector but when i will apply the eig command i can visualize what would be the square of my natural frequency so your line 15 actually giving two output one v that is your eigenvector and lambda here i am mentioning that will be your square of your natural frequency so when you will apply this eig command and you have to supply stiffness and mass value you will be able to get the square of your natural frequency and that you can cross check because you know that for a single degree of freedom system your natural frequency is nothing but square root of k by m so i will suggest here that you can cross check you can calculate the natural frequency on your calculator using this formula and then you can apply the eig command and you can verify your two natural frequencies line 18 and 19 are indicating your initial disturbance as i am giving a harmonic force i am having a choice to give initial displacement as well as initial velocity for the current case my initial displacement and initial velocity are zero and i am only applying a harmonic force of magnitude 5 sine 2 pi at t line 21 is my line where we i am calling a function beta nu mark 3 and the function is giving output of displacement velocity and acceleration the input for the function is m k c total time initial displacement initial velocity my time step as well as the force vector when i will run line 21 it will give me output of displacement velocity and acceleration and in line 22 I am plotting my displacement with respect to time if you want to visualize the acceleration or velocity you can also write the other plotting command now let's see the beta nu mark 3 function here is my function line 1 is standard line to define a function in MATLAB I am defining it it is a function output of the function will be three quantity x xd and xdd in my equation i am taking x as displacement xd velocity and this is my acceleration here is the name of your function which is your choice i have taken it as beta nu mark 3 and here is the input value for your function please understand if you want to write this value as capital m however in your main program you are writing it as small m it doesn't make any difference why because when you are writing this function whatever you are writing here that actually you are going to use in this program which is written beyond this after this line however when we are calling this function the order should not be changed that means whatever value i am going to write in my code in main code 
and if I am saying that this would be my mass, the code which is there in the function is actually taking it as mass. It is my choice that I can write it as a and I will use a whenever I am I want to write mass in my equations. So please these value or strings what you are writing in the function and whatever you are writing in the main code doesn't have any direct relationship. However, the order should be same. The first is mass in the main program. So in the function, the first will also be mass. So that this is my mass, stiffness, damping, time, velocity, exit displacement, velocity, delta and f. Line 2 is showing a and b. These are nothing but your alpha and beta constant which are there in the new mark method. Line 3, 4 indicating initial displacement and velocity and line 5 is calculating the initial acceleration. I have already shown that to calculate the initial acceleration I can use my governing equation that will be f by m minus x dot not c by m minus x k by m. So here I am using the same equation to get my initial acceleration which is actually required in the first equation of Newmark method. From 7 to 17, I am writing a for loop where I am using my three equation to get the response. This is corresponding to displacement, this is for acceleration and this is for velocity. When I will run this function, the function will give output in my main program which I am plotting here. So I hope that now you are having understanding of the philosophy of Newmark method for the force vibration case as well as the how you can write the MATLAB code. Now, so here is your MATLAB code which we have already seen. So let's try to run the code and see the output of the code. When I will run the code, I will be able to see the natural frequency which I have calculated using my EIG command. I have shown in line 15. If you want to cross check this frequency by simply applying the formula square root of k by m. So this is your formula here you are having frequency which is in radians per second so you have to divide it by 2 pi so your frequency here is coming out 5.0329 which is almost equal to the frequency calculated by your eig command this is your very uh, response where you are having the displacement with respect to time and you can see here that for the initial phase we are having a transient response which is, which is the combination of your natural frequency as well as your forcing frequency and you can see here that this is not a perfect harmonic response it is the combination of multiple frequency and a periodic response but later on when you have achieved the steady state response if you will zoom this section you will find that the waves are purely harmonic wave and indicating the frequency which is corresponding to the force vibration frequency and if you want to cross check it you can check the time gap between the two peaks and when you will inverse this time you will find the frequency in hertz so one peak is corresponding to 25.59 hertz second peak is corresponding to 25.72 hertz when you will take the difference of these two time instances and you will take the inverse of that difference you will get the frequency which will be close to the 8 hertz frequency in the response the transient phase actually dependent on the amount of the damping in your system if you are having higher damping the system will reach early to the steady state response if you are having damping lower value of damping the transient phase will stay for a longer time you can cross check here that currently you are having a damping value of 0 0.5 if i will make 0 0.1 this is my response now where you can see that up to 50 seconds the transient phase is existing in your system till 50 seconds you have not achieved the steady state response let's increase the damping by value 0.3 now you can see that the system is achieving steady state response up to a time 30 second in case of 0.5 damping value it was just up after 20 seconds value so in that way you can play with your code and you can see different types of response to have a better understanding of a damped system under the harmonic excitation. With this note, I am closing this session. Thank you.